Welcome to What is in the Air, where we explore inspired living through simple life experiments. As we get started today, please take a moment and listen to this brief message from our sponsor, Locus Mindset. Locus Mindset helps highly motivated professionals and entrepreneurs master an internal locus of control so they can attain better health, greater wealth, and stronger relationships. You can start today with the Locus Mindset 15 course. This four-module course is your step-by-step guide to move forward beyond present circumstances and create the life you want. Learn how your brain works when it comes to goal setting, pattern matching, fear, emotions, anxiety, behaviors, and so much more. This program is ideal for you if you're motivated to move forward in your life. You've been feeling stuck in important areas of your life and are sick and tired of repeating the same life patterns, never seeing any real change. And you've tried everything, or what seems like almost everything, and nothing seems to be producing change at the very core of how you feel and how you think. Locus Mindset works with the science of the mind to produce real and lasting change. This is the only goal-setting mindset mastering program that you need, because it works with the mind in a clear, evidence-based way to achieve real and lasting change. As you just heard from that advertisement, this episode of What is in the Air is sponsored by Locus Mindset. And just because you're a listener to What is in the Air, this podcast, you can actually get a $25 discount to the Locus Mindset Mastery course. And all you have to do is go over to locusmindset.com. That's L-O-C-U-S-M-I-N-D-S-E-T dot com. And when you sign up for the course, there is a place to enter a code. And the code that you're going to enter in order to get this what is in the air only discount is only for you. You include that, you get a $25 discount. And I think you'll find it to be a really valuable course. I've personally gone through it and I found it to be incredibly valuable. There's some wonderful content there and some cutting edge research and insight. But as you will know, if you don't already from this podcast, Content is not enough. You have to do something with it. It's about changing some patterns in your life and some behaviors and some ways of thinking. And this course will give you some great steps to do that. So check it out. See what you think. Welcome back to What is in the Air. Today, we're going to talk about the seven-day new experience challenge. That's right. We're going to look at new experiences. And so let's begin with a quote. Neil Gaiman is probably one of my favorite contemporary fiction authors. I don't read a lot of fiction, but when I do, Neil Gaiman is one that I turn to. And I came across this quote that I think is great. It goes like this. If you're making mistakes, then you're making new things, trying new things, learning, living, pushing yourself, changing yourself changing the world, making new things, trying new things. There's something deeply human about new experiences. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest that new experiences are good for us. Those parts of your brain that are in charge of detecting threats and keeping you safe might try to lead you to think or feel otherwise, but in general, human beings thrive upon novelty, upon novel experiences. Novel experiences, they stretch us and they help us learn. Psychologist and professor Scott Kaufman points out this delightful list of benefits that come from new experiences in a Scientific American article called What Happens When People Are Intentionally More Open to New Experiences. Among other things, Kaufman points out that new experiences are associated with creativity, tolerance for ambiguity, and openness to ambiguity and different experiences the experiences of awe and beauty and personal growth. Now that's a pretty impressive list. You've probably heard me talk about it in the past, but I am an incredible advocate for leaning into experiences 
of awe and wonder in our life, experiences of beauty. In fact, this even goes back to what, what in, in uh, antiquity, in terms of classical notions of education, uh, talked about as the transcendentals, truth, beauty, and goodness. We thrive upon experiencing truth, beauty, and goodness in our lives. And yet there's so much that we haven't experienced. So new experiences are, in essence, giving us an opportunity to step out of our own uh, current sphere, our own regular daily lives, and to experience more beauty, to experience more truth, to uh, experience more goodness. So um, awe and wonder, though, in particular, really intrigues me um, because of the growing psychology, um, psychological research around it. I'm, I'm blown away by some of the research, and I keep alluding to it, so no worries, you will get an upcoming uh, life experiment or challenge very specifically focused upon awe and wonder. I'm debating though because it's actually a chapter in a book that I've been working on that's related to the What is in the Air project. The book is called The Twelve Quests, sort of inspired by Hercules' Twelve Quests or Twelve Labors. But every quest is a different life experiment, kind of like what I give you on this podcast. So I've been struggling with, do I get it out here on the podcast? Do I give you a glimpse of it? Because I feel like I'm giving away everything in the book uh, on the podcast, or at least, at least I could. And, and maybe that's okay. Maybe just putting it into a book form, that's a different format that some people want. Um, I'm okay with that. I don't know if the publisher would be okay with that, but yeah, you get it. I'm mumbling. I am uh, meandering a little bit here. But um, but you get the idea. Novelty and new experiences. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Our minds and our bodies sometimes seem to be engaging in this tug of war. It's a tug of war between the desire for safety, for stability, for predictability on the one hand, and then the enriching, inspiring, and mind-expanding benefit of novelty and new experiences. I think about that a lot because I'm a person who um, I probably experience a measure of wanderlust. In fact, at one point, I had a t-shirt made for myself. I found that there was a genetic marker for people. It's actually the same genetic marker sometimes associated with people who have ADHD, but not everyone who has this genetic marker has ADHD. Um, it's the same marker, though, that's associated with people who experience wanderlust. They uh, are drawn to new places and new experiences, and they want to try them. I always attribute it to the fact that when I was young, I lived in 12 different states my first 12 years. And my siblings who were older, they hate it. Whenever they talk about it and they recall it, it's, um, it's a very negative experience in their mind. Um, now, there were some tough parts of my childhood. I definitely won't deny that. But I loved moving. I loved new experiences. I loved getting a fresh start. I loved going to new places and learning about new cultures and contexts. And, and it wasn't um, moving to other parts of the world. It was all within the United States. But for me, I was really drawn to that. And I know that some people aren't. But I will tell you that over the years, as I've gotten older, I, I love new experiences. I've, because I do a lot of keynote speaking, I get invited and I'll speak to groups of you know, boards uh, and, and small groups and corporate groups. I've spoken to groups of, I think maybe my largest group was maybe 6,000, 5 or 6,000. Um, and usually whenever I would do it, because I was a university professor and I would get invited and I would fly in and out oftentimes the same day or within uh, 24, 48 hours. So I'd go there, do my speaking gig, and then come back home or come back to the classroom or my work at the university. Um, and and I traveled a lot, and I got to, to, to experience a lot of new things. I saw new places, and I always made an uh, effort to experience a new food, a local food, because that was something I could do. Even if I was only there for a short period of time, I could get that experience of a new food or maybe uh, one site that I'd want to see, something that's off the beaten path, maybe not your typical tourist uh, location. And, and that was great. But over time, I actually got kind of burnt out on it. And I found myself just wanting to stay home because for me, the novelty that I love most is the novelty of new ideas. And books are powerful for me. In fact, the digital world is really powerful because there's so many novel ideas that I can explore. And I'm a qualitative researcher, ethnographic researcher at heart. Uh, so I love exploring new contexts and cultures and, and people. And 
Um, and yet over time, I found myself becoming more of a homebody in some ways. I enjoyed just staying home. Maybe you can relate to this. I enjoyed staying home and just uh, relaxing, even though there was part of me that craved novelty. There was another part that just wanted to stay stay in bed and read a good book or stay on the couch and read a good book or hang out with my kids in the house. And maybe we don't even do anything. We play a game or we read a book or we watch a movie or we do something and make a pizza, something like that. And it was interesting to me. And uh, and oftentimes it would take someone else. It would take a family member or someone else who would who would want to make a suggestion and they'd say, let's go on a hike. And I would kind of dread it and maybe not want to do it. Or they'd suggest that we do something else adventurous of some sort. Um, And I'd resist. There was a part of me that emotionally just didn't want to. I didn't want to bother with that. But every single time I did it, it was good. Every single time I tried it, it was enjoyable. And I keep saying every single, that's really extreme um, to say every, there must've been some times where maybe it didn't work out. But I think that's something that we all deal with. I'm telling you this story about myself because I think that this is something for us to consider here, that there is this mental tug of war or emotional tug of war. There's a part of us that just wants the safety, the stability, the predictability, but there's also a part of us that craves something enriching, inspiring, mind-expanding, novel, something new. And both of these play a valuable role in our lives. I don't want to diminish either, but if you're looking for growth, and the type of benefits mentioned by Kaufman in that article, then maybe it's time to create an intentional plan to seek out new experiences. Depend upon It depends upon where you are and what stage in your life, but sometimes it's useful to actually schedule out new experiences, to schedule out novelty. And it seems odd. It seems a little bit inconsistent to say that I'm going to schedule spontaneity, right? Um, But you can, you can actually create space for uh, new experiences. And within those new experiences, you can have spontaneous moments as well. And it's a way to make sure that it doesn't just fall to the side amid the busyness of your day and all the other priorities and obligations and things that you have to actually schedule novelty. So there are many ways to go about this, but for this episode, I want to offer uh, two possibilities. So on this episode, I'm actually going to give you two different life experiences or life experiments that you can try. They're both related. They're both related to um, novel experiences, adding new experiences to your life, but they're, they're two slightly different focuses, foci. So um, let's give it a try here. They both relate to seeking out new experiences for seven consecutive days. One is a challenge to pick a single new experience and devote time to it for each of seven days. The other is a browsing approach where you're going to commit to trying something new each day for seven days, something different each day for seven days. Pick the one that resonates with you and give it a try. And as always, I would love to hear from you during or after your experiment. So let's go ahead and get into the experiments today. First one, option one, is the seven-day new experience challenge that's focused upon doing one thing, but doing it for seven days, one new thing. So step one, make a list of at least 10 to 20 things that you've always wanted to do, learn, see, or experience, but you have not. So make that list, 20 things that you've always wanted to do, but you haven't. Um, You've always wanted to learn, but you haven't. You've always wanted to see, but you haven't seen it. You always wanted to experience it, but you just haven't at this stage in your life. And this might be learning a new language, learning a new skill, visiting a particular place. It could be anything. Make it large or small, whatever you want. Try not to censor yourself in this list. Make this a sort of new experience bucket list or wish list. Now, step two for the hard part. Look at that list and select one that you are willing and ready to try. So out of that list of 10 to 20, you're going to narrow it down to a single item. You're only committing to this for seven days. Uh, so you don't need to make any decisions beyond that. No major commitments. And, um, and there are some limitations to this. I mean, doing something for seven days is not like doing it for 70 or 700 And some things like learning a new language, maybe the real power and value and reward doesn't come for uh, weeks, months, or years. 
So keep that in mind and maybe choose something that you think can be enriching and really uh, deepening your experience over a seven day period. Step three, next, if this new experience requires certain knowledge, skills, planning, or resources, this is your time to do it. In other words, you might actually have to do some preparation before you launch this seven-day experience. Figure out what you need and get it in place. So let's imagine that the um, that the new experience is something that you want to do in terms of um, maybe it's it's backpacking or hiking or or something like that, and you may have a trail nearby or a place that you'd like to go to and do a seven day backpack. Maybe it's about learning a new language, but just you're going to write down. Okay, if I wanted to do this, get this experience, if I wanted to develop the skill, or I wanted to practice this new thing. What are the things that I need? Think of it as if you're making a recipe, what are the ingredients that you need in order to bake that cake? So what are the ingredients that you need uh, for this particular experiment? So write those out and figure out what you need and start getting them in place. Start working toward toward, um, doing that pre-experiment preparation uh, or experiment preparation, I guess, pre-preparation. That's a little bit redundant. Step four, now pull out your calendar. Looking at the next 30 days, block off at least seven days where you're willing and able to commit a portion of your day to this new experience. How much uh, time each day? That's just going to depend upon your availability and what you choose. It might be an hour. It might be a full day. Of course, this does depend upon your other commitments in life. Um, I get that. So just pick something that works for you in your life at this time. Step five, it is not necessary that this be consecutive days, but if at all possible, try to make it seven consecutive days. Um, if, if It depends on what you choose, though. There may be some things you choose where it's better to do it every other day. Because maybe the new experience has to do with some kind of exercise and you need a little bit of recovery time in between. So maybe you're going to do it every other day or something like that. Um, You can just figure that out, put it on your calendar, block the time off. Um, Step seven, take time throughout the seven different days as you you do these. So you're going to dive in and and get started uh, to pause, reflect, record your thoughts and observations. Spend a little extra time at the end of day seven doing the same What did you learn? What did you experience? What did you think? What did you feel? What are you going to get out of this? What do you want to do next? Once you finish that seventh day, it's really time to decide what next, like what I just said here. Perhaps you want to continue with this, or maybe it was just a good experience and you're done with it. Ready to move on to something else? Ready to let it go? Ready to pick up another life experiment, perhaps? That's your first option. Now let's go for another one. Maybe you're interested more in the buffet style where you're not going to commit to a single food. You want to try out a variety of foods because you're not quite sure what you want. Um, So as we get into the second one, let me give you another interesting quote. Uh, Jean Piaget, if you are an educator or psychologist, you probably know the name Piaget, pretty well known developmental psychologist. And there's a great quote here about new experiences. Um, The goal of education is not to increase the amount of knowledge, but to create the possibilities for a child to invent and discover, to create men. Well, Piaget said men to create people who are capable of doing new things. I love that vision for education, that the goal here is to equip people for things that don't even exist yet, to nurture people with the the skill set, the mindset, the disposition, the capabilities that prepare them to embrace novelty and new experiences, because that is life. In fact, I can't remember where the quote came from, but there was a quote I came, came across once that said something like this, that the the only institution that resists change and persists is the cemetery. Yeah, I don't even know if cemeteries do that. I think the cemetery business model probably requires adjustment and adaptation. But but the idea is that things that are alive and living and thriving, um, they crave upon novelty and new things. So let's dive in. Option number two here is, uh, again, same step as before. Make a list of 10 to 20 things that are readily available to you. Um, but you've never tried. Could be food, visiting a nearby place, meeting a particular person, listening to a new type of music, whatever else comes to mind. But what's important for this particular challenge is that you pick things that are available enough that you can experience at least one of them for each of seven consecutive days. So here for this one, I would not choose learn a new language 
or something that you really need to do over an extended period of time to appreciate. Uh, it's like, I'm going to learn to play piano. I'm going to try it for one hour on one day and that's it. I, it just, you sort of lose the real value, the real benefits uh, from it. So pick something where a single experience is worthwhile listening to a new type of music just for a day or something like that. Maybe even that is, is a, a stretch. I don't know, but give it a try. Um, so things that are available enough that you can experience at least one of them for each of the seven consecutive days. And in general, it's useful to select experiences that you can accomplish in an evening or a day on the weekend. And step two from this list, now you're going to narrow it down, your list of 10 to 20, narrow it down to the seven that are the most interesting and ones that you really think you can do. Step three, get that calendar out, block off time on seven consecutive days for the experiment, assigning one of your seven new experiences to each of those days. And as we get to the next uh, step four, uh, if there's any planning preparation needed, same thing as before, get all that preparation in place for each of the items. Okay, now what next? Um, step five, after each experience, set aside 10 to 15 minutes to record your thoughts, questions, observations, and experiences. What did you feel, think, and learn? And then at the end of the seven days, you're going to set aside a little extra time to do some reflection. Um, what did you observe and notice about yourself? What did it feel like before, during, and after each experience? Did this inspire any additional new experiences that you want to try in the future? And out of the seven experiences, was there anything that you might want to continue as you taste, you did your taste test of new experiences. Was there one that you wanted to make an ongoing and familiar experience for you? All right. So those are the two options for you. Let me give you a, a few tips, just maybe two or three. Um, one tip is new experiences can, can evoke both fear and joy. Keep that in mind. And those are both appropriate and natural. If you have maybe struggled with moments of anxiety or panic, it sometimes does happen uh, when you have a new experience. Perhaps you've had that. Perhaps that evokes some anxiety for you at times. And that's okay. Don't run away from it. Um, I'm not a psychologist or counselor, and you certainly want to go with any professional advice if you're under you know, treatment like that. But I'm just acknowledging that fear and joy are both a natural, in their natural experiences and emotions, and they're naturally a part of new experiences. It's not out of the ordinary to experience fear and joy when you try something new. So that's okay. Embrace both and use this as a chance to learn about yourself. If the fear is holding you back, consider doing a little research on how to overcome the fear. Maybe seek out some help from some other people, either readings or individuals. Um, there's a great article that I include on the website. You know that I have, instead of doing show notes for this podcast, I actually write kind of a polished article uh, sometimes uh, from the trans transcription of this podcast. Sometimes I write it first. I do them uh, you know, both ways around. Um, but there's a great article that I referenced there and you can click on the link if you go to whatisintheair.com and you find this particular uh, life experiment about new experiences. You'll find an article called How to Conquer Your Fear of Trying New Things. Might be helpful. Check it out. I really enjoyed it. Second one, you can do either of these alone either of these two kinds of, of new experience experiments, that's hard to say, alone, you can do them with a partner or even with a group of people. Maybe you want to experiment with a mix of all three of those. Go for it. It is up to you. Finally, last piece of, of um, advice, and then I will let you go and you can dive in. Part of this experiment is to get your thinking, to get you thinking about the role of intentionally planning and making room for novelty and new experiences in your life and what experiences, what, what they do for you. So as you go through this, consider how you might create some space for novelty and new experiences moving forward. Novelty is a gift waiting to be opened. Sorry, that was a little bit cliche, but it's true. It's uh, novelty is the unknown. It is like a gift. It's a wrapped gift and you uh, don't know what's in it. And maybe it's unpleasant. Maybe it's pleasant. Maybe it's desirable, but you're not going to know unless you open it. And there is that excitement, that sense of mystery that's involved. There are a lot of really deeply human sensations and experiences that are tied to novelty. The potential of joy, the potential of wonder, surprise, facing and overcoming fears and uncertainty 
uncertainty. There is the sense of mystery, all of these deeply human and tied to novelty in our lives. Now, of course, as with many things, there um, are dangers and extremes. If you're only doing new things and you have no habits, then you don't have this, you may lose a sense of safety and security. You feel like you don't, you don't have a home base and uh, that can really be stressful for people. So, so also it's nice to keep in mind that that you're looking for a balance. You keep some things and you have some rituals and habits and and things that are familiar and you don't have to exhaust your mind and your emotions in order to do it each time because it's just sort of a natural thing. I don't know if I really analyze how I brush my teeth every morning. Maybe I take some time to look at the latest research and see if there's a better way to do it, but but I'm not changing that habit on a daily basis or even weekly or monthly basis. Um, so you have those kinds of things, but then there are others that if you have those habits, then it gives you some room to explore some novelty and new experiences, which can really be enriching. So give it a try. That's the experiment I'm offering you for this episode. I hope you give it a try. As usual, if you try it out, go on over to whatisintheair.com and you can get the whole article to try it out. So you can print it out or reference it, save it however you want. And there's a place if you try it to share your story. The link is called Share Your Story and it's at the top of the blog. And um, it's a place to tell me about what you did and what happened. And I'd love to, to maybe use that. If you have any tips, um, I can actually adapt or adjust the article based upon your insights. There's also another link there to submit a life experiment. If there is something that you want to share, maybe you have your own new life experiment and you want to recommend it, send it in. I'll take a look at it. I might be interested in turning it into an article or putting it on the podcast or both. So that's all I have for you in this episode. I will see you on the next one. <music> 